Hey guys, just real quick, remember tomorrow, Saturday, November 2nd, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're doing our charity, our third annual charity for Extra Life uh, Foundation. We're raising money for children's hospitals. You can win some swag bags. I have four of them to give away. Plus, if you donate, every $5 gets you a raffle ticket where you can win video cards, mouse pads, headphones, and et cetera, all brought to us by sponsors and things like that. So come stop by Saturday, November 2nd, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come hang out, help some people out. I'll see you there. Before we get into the video, I just want to touch on real quick. Well, not into the video. We're already into the video. Yeah, just before we get into the review, I just want to touch on real quick. Last video, I asked you guys, why do you not want me to play specific loadouts you guys gave me some great answers we're going to make an entire video about that and i'm going to give you my counterpoints and we can continue this conversation but i just want to let you know that i read them all i agree with some of them i disagree with some of them and we'll talk about it in another video but for this video i'm going to help you guys out i'm going to play this on tactical assault sledgehammer and then i'm going to play it on an ability based character that has no perks for weaponry that's what we're going to do. Two forms of footage, and we'll give you my thoughts. So we're going to try out the blackout right now. Let's get into it. So with all of these weapons currently that was released in Fortnite, I already covered my favorite two, the shotgun and the spear. However, I must admit that since Hexylvania came out at the same time, I did most of my testing within those missions. Recently, as in fact yesterday, I brought the guns into higher content, 160, 174, and although they do still hold up, they're not nearly as powerful as I originally thought, specifically if you're not going against physical or nature enemies. That is a huge drawback on these weapons. The fact that you can only roll them physical or fire makes it a lot harder to use these in certain scenarios. In fact, I'm most likely going to re-roll all of mine to fire and use these weapons during a higher, more difficult nature wave content because keeping them physical, you just don't do enough damage on most of the waves that you will encounter later on in the game. However, if you're a new player and not really fighting elemental husks all the time, then these weapons are definitely for you. So originally I went on a bit of a rant about uh, the impact on these weapons being really, really high. And then I counter my own argument by saying it's not high on the assault rifle and it's not. And since we're talking about the assault rifle, uh, just, just know that the impact on the shotgun is very, very high and could be very good for a constructor, but the assault rifle itself is not really worth it. But I just want to show you the loadouts that I ran this with. First up, we have tactical assault sledgehammer. Uh, this is probably your absolute best bet for something similar, uh, to the highest DPS you can possibly get. Of course, we're going to run totally rocking out subwafers battle beat in a pinch. I hate this perk. It's terrible, but I didn't want to bring survivalist because I was doing my absolute best to keep myself at 80 or 80% 80 less health. Now, the thing about the 80% less health is that it's kind of irrelevant because once you get to that low point of health and it starts to regen, at least I was told that it regens to 30%. So keeping yourself at 80% is technically impossible, but we tried to do, do it, keep ourselves as low as possible, and we're using uh, in a pinch to help regen our shield. The only other thing really here is Ow My Eye, increase headshot damage up to 50% based on the percentage of your missing health. That is a huge bonus, but it has to, it relies very heavily on the amount of health you have, which can be difficult to keep at such a pace. The other thing that I want to mention is technically this build does a crazy amount of damage. We have Battle Beat and Subwafers with Totally Rocket Out giving us crit chance. This gives us 50% more damage. This gives us 50% more damage. And this gives us 17% more. So we're at 117% extra base damage, not including crit chance or crit damage. And then the non-assault rifle character we chose to play was Wild Fragment Deadeye. I don't really need to go over this, just look, there are no assault rifle buffs in here. That was the goal. You guys can see how they perform, and let's talk about it. So the next thing I want to talk about is, are the rolls themselves. So I mentioned it in the two previous videos, and I finally did it. I changed it to fire, and I put a utility perk on top of there and took away one of the crit damage rolls. I did this because my thought process, process behind it is that 80% damage at a faster fire rate should equate to more damage, at least in a long time frame, 
uh, then a double crit damage, one crit rating roll. It should. I don't know if it does, because nothing in this game has that amount of health that you could actually test this on. Uh, the idea here is to keep yourself at 80% health, or less, or 80% less health, and then this should bump this up to uh, exponentially higher, because you're shooting more, you have more bonus damage, etc. Did it work out? Well, no, <laughs> not really. Um, it did work for a little bit of what it was trying to do. The issue is there, the enemies in the game don't have enough health uh, for this to catch up to crit damage, crit damage, crit rating. That build does enough damage fast enough to where you're not going to notice the difference over a long period of time that a fire rate or a reload speed perk will give you more DPS based off the 80% bonus damage. It just doesn't happen unless you're maybe doing endurance, a max, max level, the last wave. You might be able to get some testing done there, but I don't play endurance anymore. I don't have a base set up for it. Regardless, that's neither here or there. All of the footage you are seeing is a weapon that's rolled like this one here. And I actually ended up enjoying using the weapon for certain very specific scenarios. Playing around with at least the assault rifle, there are certain things that have popped up that are more problematic than just the physical roll here. The main things being the reload speed is 2.7 seconds, which is crazy long. And the largest or biggest thing that I've noticed that is actually an issue for this weapon is the magazine size. There is no place that you can put a magazine size roll on this gun. So that means you are stuck with a magazine of 20 unless you bring light show. And even then, you're only looking at like 24 bullets. And in my opinion, that's not really worth it. The issue stems from shooting two bullets at once. So in reality, even though your magazine size is 20, you're only shooting 10 times. And even though the damage is good, it's not good enough to where this will ever be your main weapon in the game. On top of that, it's terrible for mobbing. If you don't know what mobbing is, it's a weapon you would use like the Mercury LMG that kills a bunch of the small stuff quickly. You'll never ever use this for that. And as of right now, the soldier perk we have to that accompanies this one is a 50% bonus damage to headshot damage. And that's where the gun falls off even more. The weapon itself is too inaccurate to be a semi-auto assault rifle. The damage is there. It does hit hard. Uh, in a perfect build with perfect scenarios, I was hitting for 460,000 damage per button click on a Nature Smasher at 160. And that's fine. But the issue turned into the one clip would not one shot the smasher, which some guns can do, like the bundle bus or something like that, if it's appropriately rolled. And then you had to reload. And the reload time is three, three seconds. Since the reload time is so long and it's not very good for mobbing, it's hard to switch targets, change your direction, and then shoot at something new. It just doesn't work. And the last thing about this weapon, for being a semi-auto weapon, you'd assume that you're aiming for headshots, and that'd be great. Except you can't. The recoil and the bullet spread on this gun is crazy high and allows for a ton of missed shots, especially from over four tiles away. You'll be lucky if you hit a broadside of a barn than rather the husk you're aiming for. The only real good spot that I found for this was for killing smashers because the damage is good and you don't have to move to a single target and you have enough time to reload, then you're good to go. Even playing this on a non-soldier that is specced into assault rifle damage, it still held up nicely damage-wise. Sadly, the recoil, the bullet spread, the fact that it can only run physical or fire, and the accuracy is just makes it bottom tier. Out of the black metal set, I do suggest leveling up the shotgun. I do suggest leveling up the spear, especially the spear. They do a lot of damage. They have a ton of knockback. They have utility and everything else that you can really want for a weapon and have a lot less negative things about them than the blackout. The blackout's impact, although high, isn't high enough to do what the shotgun can do, even at range. Maybe if I keep all of these weapons fire, I'll use them on nature waves. Again, damage, okay, everything else about it, not so good. It's up for you guys to decide, but in my humble opinion, this is a hard pass. Unless you're new to the game and you need a fire weapon set.
then it's okay because the damage is there it's everything else about the gun that makes it bad so there you go guys i just want to apologize some of the frame rates might be a little rough in the uh, footage that's just i had too much stuff i guess open while i was recording i didn't notice it and now i don't have really time to fix it but the numbers and the math and the theory is all there so hopefully it's good enough apologies on this one though that's on me i'll try to be more attentive to it next time thank you guys so much for watching let me know what you think about the blackout i honestly think it's a hard pass the damage is there like i said but everything else about the gun just makes it fall off so fast we're not going to cover the sniper that's a hard pass too it's not even worth it uh and we're still waiting for the new team perk we got mythic uh, Storm King and Dungeons coming real soon. I can't wait to cover that. Remember, tomorrow, Saturday, the 2nd, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, twitch.tv slash rounded tic tac. It's going to be a party. If you got nothing to do, come by, come hang out. I'd love to meet more of you guys. Uh, we're raising money for a charity event, which is dope. And yeah, it's just going to be a good time. If you're looking for a way to support the channel, you can always use creator code OO tic tac OO. And lastly, if you're new, think about subscribing. I got a bunch of guys on this. YouTube channel. I almost called it a website. I got a bunch of guys on this YouTube channel. Come learn, play, and come to the stream. I'll see you guys on the next one. Tic Tac out.